Okay, here's the patient for the day. It is a two-ton barred unit, and it's got a bad compressor that needs to be replaced. This is really an old barred, and replacing the compressor in this old system just kind of goes against everything that I believe in. Uh, it's got a bad compressor. We really need to replace the whole thing. But here we go. Sometimes when you go there and you give them a number, a label off the unit, they give you the wrong voltage. Yeah, that's happened to me more than once. Well, there's the compressor. Here we have a beautiful piece of cow manure. All right, now we have the uh, gauges hooked up to the low and high side because we're going to recover all the refrigerant. See, here's the manifold gauge, and then all the way down here, hooked up to the recovery unit, and then that starts up right here to the liquid side on the recovery tank. Now what we want to do is we want to open this up and let the liquid flow into this. Alright, we got a scale hooked up. It's measuring how many pounds and ounces that we're recovering from this unit. Okay, now here's the new compressor. It's a 24,000 BTU compressor, which is two tons. I've already installed the crankcase heater right here. Also, I already put the mounts on. Now we're getting ready to split a Schrader on... Say that three times. Right here. Let it Schrader, let it Right, so let's go ahead and pop this. And by the way, here's one way you can tell if a compressor uh, has arrived safely. Hear that? That's the nitrogen being released from it. So if it does that, that's good news. If it don't, it could be bad, especially if it's POE oil. I like to start around the back side first. Do the hard part first? Yeah, do the hard part. Get it out of the way. Put a little spot in there. Once it runs around, it's ready to go. Be sure you take your Schrader valve out before you in the quarter. And if you want to, you can feather it up a little bit to make it look pretty. And to make sure you get it down deep enough into the pot. Mighty fine job here, Dave. And yes, sir, look at that job. Looks absolutely beautiful. If you want to have a wet rag close by, go ahead and cool her down. doing the uh, bolts that fasten the mounts on the old compressor. You want to try to get the right compressor, but sometimes you get to go to a different different style and you'll see the bolt pattern won't match up sometimes. But generally they do. color it could be purple blue yellow usually goes to the start that goes to your your run capacitor okay we've recovered all the refrigerant out of this old barred unit and we were able to recover you know it, it says uh, two pounds and like 14 20 50 or 14 anyway it's kind of shifting around mainly because I wiggled the jug right now. But anyway, it's almost three pounds. Now we had to uh, boil this off because all the refrigerant was migrated in the oil. You have to leave the recovery unit on the system so that all the refrigerant will boil off and go into the recovery tank.
All right, now we're going to break the vacuum that we've created by recovering the gas with some nitrogen. I've already turned the, the tank on, and now I'm going to put a little in to bring up some positive pressure in the system. Now I'll uh, allow us to do a clean job of uh, unsweating some of the fittings. Okay, now we're removing the core from the schrader on the high side to release any of the nitrogen that uh, we put in there just to break the vacuum because I know right now that has a positive pressure. So there goes the nitrogen. A lot of times you're going to have oil come out because it's coming from the liquid line, liquid side. And now we're going to remove the suction side and of course pull the core out of the schrader. And then putting a new compressor in, you want to put new schrader valves back in. Oh definitely. That's your best opportunity to, to put new cores into the schraders is when you're replacing the compressor or any time actually that you have to service the uh, refrigeration cycle. All right, next, it's time to unbraze the uh, lines from the compressor. Now the suction line has been engraved. Or is that deep raised? I can't remember. <laughs> I think that's debrief. Yeah. When you're debriefing somebody, you debrief. And we've crimped the suction line on the compressor closed, and we've crimped closed the discharge tubing on, on the compressor. And this is so that oil doesn't leak out. And we're going to braze this closed as well. That way when we remove the compressor from where it's sitting, we're not going to take an oil bath if we have to tip it on its side. Now we're going to brace this tubing closed that's on the compressor side. If you'll notice I have this little piece of rod here, it's because I like saving rod. Jim has a tendency to get on to me for doing stuff <laughs> like that, but yeah. <laughs> I just, at the price of rod today, if you can weld this little piece onto another one, I'm sure if you've gone to school, they'll teach you to, to do that. All right, now when you move any of the tubing out of the way uh, before you to move the compressor out of the way, uh, you have to be very careful not to kink any of the tubing. Otherwise, you're going to wind up re-plumbing uh, some spots. I'm thinking about maybe cutting on. this right here anyway, because we're going to have to shorten this piece to go in the center of our compressor. Oh, okay. So, you know, if I cut it that way, it'll be out of the way. We can do that or bend it all the way out and then take a chance of bending it back in. I, I would say, I would say bend it back and then, and then bend it uh, back when you're, you know, the other way when, uh, with the new compressor. And that way you'll know. Instead of cutting it? Have a, have a better idea where to cut it, yeah. 